What's going on, guys? Let's talk about some gang shit. I normally don't talk a lot about gang stuff, gang activity, because I'm not very, very interested in it. But sometimes I am a little bit interested in it because it is a part of my childhood, me growing up in Los Angeles, Hollywood, to be exact. There was gangs everywhere. It was very popular to be a gangbanger back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. And it is still popular to this day. So uh, this is an older story, but let's talk about it, shall we? There is a Nipsey Hussle memorial at the site location of where his clothing shop or whatever that place was where he owned where he was shot and killed by a member of his own gang it's a fantastic mural the artist is a great artist and i want to say about uh it's been over a couple weeks now that somebody came and took a red can of spray paint and ragged it and we basically now all know who did this crime uh, it was a gentleman that goes by the name of Baby Capone or Little Capone or something like that. And he is from a gang called IFBG. Uh, Most people that watch my channel don't really know about gang stuff. So it stands for Inglewood Family Blood Gang. Uh, it is a pretty old gang. It's been around as far as I can remember. Uh, and they did that because they have what's been since I can remember uh, it's one of their biggest rivalries, and that is with the Rolling 60s Crip. And that's where Nipsey Hussle was from. Uh, these areas are pretty close to each other. Uh, over the decades and decades, uh, many guys and girls on both sides have been shot and killed. So when Nipsey Hussle died, it seemed for a while that everybody in Los Angeles came together kind of like September 11th, how when that happened, everybody came together. We were all Americans uh, at the end of that year. It's so funny how that changed. Now we don't want to fly the flag. We want to take a knee. But back in those days, you had NFL players crying as the uh, American uh, uh, anthem was played. Anyways, so this kid, Baby Capone, Little Capone, goes and puts it on his uh, Instagram page of him putting you know nipsey killer on his forehead just ragging it putting up ifbg and one of the members of the rolling 60s crypt i guess they call him cowboy or something like that a guy who's way too fucking old to be going around hanging around the neighborhood uh talking about gang this guy looks like he's at least 50 fucking years old uh take a good look kids this is what you don't want to be when you grow up. All you little gangbangers right now that you might be uh, out there watching other people's videos, you might even a couple of you might even be watching this video. Look at that man. That's how you're going to end up if you keep up with this fuckery. That's that's exactly what's going to happen to you. You're going to be a burnt out smoker hanging around a bunch of 20 year olds showing them how to be a true crip. What kind of fucking lame nonsense shit is that? All right. Anyways, so. This guy goes out on his Instagram, this old Crip guy, says that to the Capone guy, you better watch your back. Um, half the city's going to come after you. We're going to get other gangs to come at, after you, blah, blah, blah. And it's, it ain't going to be good for you. And he tells like the, the, the Inglewood family gang, you, you need to check your homeboy, blah, blah, blah. Here's the thing. First of all, this baby Capone guy, he must have some pretty big balls on him. Because this guy has made more than a few videos basically telling anybody, if you want some, come and get me. I'm not hard to find. And he stays right in Inglewood, I'm assuming. Uh, I don't know exactly where he lives, but he's done lives where he's on the street and nobody's done shit to him yet. I'm not saying they're not going to do something to him because somebody's going to want to do something to him. Somebody's going to want to put hands. But best believe, if you want to be that dude to try to put hands on him, just me just be warned right now he's probably armed and you're probably going to get shot so is it really worth it is it really worth it even if you're from the rolling 60s gang is it really worth your freedom your life or anybody else's life to go you know try to shoot him because he took a spray paint can and dissed a mural you got you got to really think it's one thing if you want to just say hey man let's head up let's fight one on one okay sure go do that but let, let's let's remember, guys. Uh, I grew up in Los Angeles. Uh, I was born there in '79. Uh, half of the city, as I recall, now I didn't Google anything before I made this video because uh, I'm not one of these 
uh, fucking white trolls on the internet that knows all about gang shit because I'm on the computer always like reading every statistic of every gang and every killing and murder and all that crap that they do. I'm basing my facts off of what I remember. Uh, Rolling 60s Crips was a very big gang uh, back in my day. I, I don't know if they're big now. I imagine they still are. And Inglewood family, they were a pretty big gang. I don't know if they're still big now. Uh, I, back in the day, the, the, the 60s were way bigger than the families. But here's the thing. Rolling 60s have a lot of enemies. They have a lot of enemies all around the city. Nobody is going to do uh, that gang's dirty work. There is not going to be one fucking gang in Los Angeles that's going to say, you know what, hey, let's go to Inglewood and do a drive-by. No, 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 no. They're not stupid because they don't like the 60s. Half the fucking uh, gangs in L.A., particularly the black gangs, don't like the 60s. When Nipsey Hussle was alive and and doing music, now I will I will say this: uh, I give him a lot of credit for being a grinder that he was, being born in unfortunate circumstances. And you know what? If he felt the need to join a gang, or he joined a gang, or whatever he did, he was young. Blah 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 blah. He was always about you know grinding and making money. And I respect that. I respect the hustler in him for doing that. And I I, I do give him props for trying to make his neighborhood at least starting from the epicenter which was on Slauson and uh not uh, Slauson and Crenshaw right there trying to you know give back in a, in a small way at the end of the day you can only do so much even if he was a a, a a billionaire you can only do so much you can only help out your people so much they gotta want to help themselves that's how it works uh, he wasn't the government. It wasn't his job to uplift people. It's your own damn job to uplift yourself. Not that dude right there. It's your job to go ahead and do that. And when he was sad, people were fans of Nipsey. They, they, they loved him. They loved his music. Uh, I'm not for, uh, you know, you know, spouting out, oh, yeah, I'm a gangster. I'm a gangster, blah, blah, blah. You do what you do at the end of the day. But let's not forget there was a lot of other people who didn't fuck with Dipsy Hustle. They didn't like him because he was their enemy. There was plenty of people that if they ever ran into Nipsey Hustle, that they would put hands on him. They just never ran into him because he was always with security. I mean, it's, it's got to it's gotta be kind of hard to try to whoop somebody's ass when he's got like three, four, five security guards around him and 10 goons. You know what I mean? You're, you're not going to be able to touch him like that. But no, there was plenty of people that if they see Nipsey, they'd have fucking shot his ass because at the end of the day, it does not matter if you're a millionaire rapper and you're famous and blah, blah, blah. You're still a fucking enemy. That don't make you any better than me. I'm still your enemy. And if I still see you, you're from a gang that, that shot my grandfather back in the 70s. Fuck you guys. And that's how it works. And, you know, the gang problem in Los Angeles will never, ever end just because it's too many years of all this bloodshed, all this violence, all this nonsense going on. You got people on both sides who have lost their lives. And, you know, at the end of the day, they don't they don't care. They, they got Instagram. They got uh, Twitter, whatever the hell uh, social media they have to put up their message and this and that. The only reason why, in my personal opinion... Los Angeles isn't as bad or worse than Chicago is because there's plenty to do in Los Angeles. Chicago's a, you know, I don't want to say Chicago's a dump, but most, a lot of it is. Downtown area is nice, but for the most part, it's a cold, grimy city. It's always freaking cold. It's dangerous as stuff, and they got social media. In LA, it's like, hey, do you want to smoke some really bomb weed and then go talk to some girls at the beach, or do you want to go shoot each other? That's the only reason why the gang shootings in LA are are less than they are in Chicago. It's just because of the environment. If you if you have uh, dudes in Chicago, if the Chicago if the uh, if the environment turned into like the same weather as Los Angeles, or if you mixed or if you switched them up, where you put all the gang bangers in Chicago to L.A., all the shootings would drop down. It's just because there's more to do in L.A., so there's less likely a chance of them you know going out and saying you know huh, today is a, a 78 degrees and it's sunny outside do i want to go shoot up a party or do i want to go to venice boardwalk anyways guys uh, tell me what you think tell me if i'm right or i'm wrong but of course i'm never wrong i'm always right it is what it is anyways catch up with you later peace out